going to show everybody today how to make stuffed cabbage the Cray Jack way because some of you try to make it and some of you don't try. So here, here are the instructions. First of all, I'm going to talk about the cabbage. You want to get cabbage that's flat on top. You don't want to get the pointy cabbage that you, the leaves are just not big enough. And so here's what you do. First of all, you core, take out the core, take a big knife and go around and at an angle and take out the core and then you take out more of it in little pieces and the next thing is to have your water boiling which is going right now drop the whole head in by the way you put salt in it too so and let it uh, let it just start to boil you can see the leaves are already falling off as they fall off, as they get soft, they'll fall off. You can just take, hold, hold the cabbage with a, with a big fork like this, and take the leaves off one by one. Let them uh, boil a little bit until they get soft, and that takes a few minutes. So that's how you get your leaves. See the leaves now are kind of floppy. Take them out of the water, put them on a paper towel. And just keep cutting those leaves away. You may have to saw down into the cabbage a little bit to get them loose. This really doesn't take very long if you have your water boiling and everything prepped ready to go. Let's see here. Okay, we'll let that boil a little bit. If you come over here now, um, Andy. I'm going to show you what to do. After they're cool, it doesn't take very long. Take a knife and pare down this big rib that's there in the center. Because that will help you to roll your cabbage a little bit better. And then just keep laying them aside. Okay, one more thing about the cabbage. You don't want to cook the cabbage. You just want to get it limp. So I'm going to let all this cool while I uh, make the filling. Okay, for the filling, I've used five pounds of ground beef and three pounds of ground pork. One cup of raw rice. You don't cook the rice ahead of time. A teaspoon of salt for each pound of meat. So that's eight teaspoons of salt. And probably about a tablespoon of pepper and a tablespoon and a half of uh, paprika and um, then I've cooked one green pepper and one onion and I've let that cool you kind of want to saute that ahead of time I think Grandma Zetrock taught me how to do that okay and then you want to take three eggs you want to beat them up so that they get dispersed a little more evenly and just use what God gave you, your hands, to mix it. Of course you want to make sure they're clean. You want to squeeze and, and just make sure the pork and the beef get all mixed together. This will take a little while. kind of have to have a big container for this. so. Well, another thing too, before you make your cabbage, you want to make sure you have enough containers to store it in. If you're going to, of course, you're probably going to want to freeze it because this makes probably about oh, 30 so rolls or whatever. And you can use this same mixture to um, put in a green pepper and put that on top of your cabbage when it's cooking 
and you'll have green peppers along with it but I don't have any more green peppers today so I had to use my last one in the in the mix so it's kind of like kneading bread you just keep turning it over and until it's really good and mixed okay well I'll finish this and then we'll do another section on how to make the rolls and then how to cook it okay I've taken the rib back the back rib off of all my cabbage and now we're going to make the rolls I usually just get a handful of um, you want to make them all the same if you make some of them smaller then they cook longer so make them make them kind of all the same roll it and then take the end and kind of swirl it in sometimes it it pops open but you can just that'll be okay when it's cooking okay, do another one I would say that's probably three-fourths of a cup that's just a guess I made them so big the last time that we sometimes you have to cut off a little cabbage to get it rolled in tucked in nice okay I'll make another one let's do a larger one here just have to kind of learn to eyeball it. This is kind of thin so that tucks in pretty well. Okay, you kind of sometimes have to hold it down here because the filling will squish down and uh, then make make the other end too short. We may have to edit this one out. This is kind of a messy one. I think I will. Well, I'll eat that one. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do another one. That one was You see what I mean about the cabbage leaves being big enough? You don't want to shortchange your cabbage. Okay, I'll make the rest of them. Then I'll show you how to layer the cabbage and the sauerkraut and the tomatoes in the pan. I'm going to show you now how to fill the pan. I'm going to do it in the sink so you can see down in. Uh, you know, you had that, that cabbage left over from when you uh, got the leaves off. So I'm going to take that, kind of coarsely chop it, sprinkle some of that in the bottom, and then take a can of sauerkraut. I usually just drain it. Um, I don't rinse it or anything like that. I just drain out the juice. Sprinkle some sauerkraut down there. Maybe like a half a can because we're, what we're going to do is we're going to make layers of everything. Sauerkraut and then tomatoes. I didn't have uh, two cans of crushed tomatoes so I took one can of whole tomatoes and put it through my food processor. I left a little water in from the cooking the cabbage. You don't want to throw that away. You want to hang on to that. And then you start layer in your cabbage like so they can fit right next to each other they don't have to have their own space or anything like that and then what we're going to do we're going to add some some more water from the from cooking the cabbage because so that's salted and it'll help flavor the, the whole pot. 
and sprinkle some more coarsely chopped cabbage. This way you use all this, all this, these nice vegetables. And some sauerkraut. it's just kind of put together like pretty easy layer another in I usually count them but I didn't do it this time so okay I'm gonna stop now because it's gonna get too heavy to lift it out of the sink so uh, that's basically you just keep layering more water chopped cabbage, sauerkraut, tomato, until you get to the top. Okay, that's it for filling your pan. Okay, this is what a full pot looks like. There's probably maybe around 30 stuffed cabbages. Most of them are so big that we divide one for a meal, so get our little power boost induction stove going here. And it will be boiling in no time. One thing about induction, you can wipe wipe the stove right up close to the burner and you don't catch your paper towel on fire like I've done before. So it'll come to a boil, then I'll turn it down and let it simmer for a one hour and one half. And then let it cool. And we'll show you what it looks like um, after it's all done. I'll put it into some containers and let it cool out on the back porch because it's freezing here today and then I'll put it in the freezer okay here's my finished product it's cooked for an hour and a half it's cooled a little bit here's um, a sample I know on TV they always cut it up things open and taste it but I'm not going to do that because I want to save it so anyway lots of good juice tomatoey sauerkraut um, cabbage in the in the juice so I'll set these outside let them cool and um, the menu for stuffed cabbage dinner is always the same stuffed cabbage kielbasa mashed potatoes and green beans we always fix it the same way we don't just serve it by itself but we have all those other things that go along with it so that's all for now thanks a lot